You are watching Econoom TV, the unofficial broadcaster of economics for South African students. In this episode, chapter 4, about measuring the performance of the economy. This is part 2 of 4, and we will be looking at economic growth. Economic growth is quite important, since it means that there are more goods and services available for people to consume. Growth is calculated by comparing GDP in one year with the next and determining whether there are more goods and services available for everyone. Now we know that it's the value of goods and services that are used to measure GDP. And value consists of price multiplied with quantity. Now we use the simple growth rate in these calculations where you can just say it's the new value minus the old value and that is divided by the old value times 100. So in this example of economic growth rates, we'll look at the GDP in 2008, subtract the GDP in the year 2000, and divide that answer by the GDP in the year 2000, multiplying that with 100. So in this example, we have an economy that produces beer, potatoes, and soft drinks. And you have the prices and quantities for these products in the year 2000 and the year 2008. The first step is to calculate the value of GDP in 2000. Then do it for 2008. And from that, you can calculate the economic growth rate. Calculating the values of the GDP is simple. You multiply the price with the quantity and that gives you a GDP value. So in the case of beer, in the year 2000, at a price of 2 rand 50, 10,000 units of beer are produced, and this gives a GDP value for beer of 25,000 rand. You do the same for the others, and this adds up to a GDP total value of 72,200. Similar calculations are possible for 2008, and it yields a GDP value of 203,800 rand. You can calculate the value of the economic growth rate by taking the GDP in 2008, 203,000, subtracting the GDP value in 2000, dividing by the value in 2000, multiplying with 100, gives a growth rate of 182%. We have to keep in mind that since the GDP is value, that means that price is multiplied with quantity. Over the period 2000 to 2008, the quantities produced increased, as you can see from 10,000 units of beer up to 11,000. However, a part of the increase in value was also driven by an increase in price. For beer, the increase was from 2 rand 50 up to 6 rand. And you can see for the other products, prices doubled as well. A part of the economic growth that you see in this large GDP value is just an increase in inflation and not an increase in quantities produced. We can solve this problem of inflation pushing up the value of GDP by using real GDP to calculate growth rates. Nominal GDP is described as the GDP at current prices. So in this example, it would be the prices of 2008. Real GDP is calculated by valuing the GDP at constant prices. Now these constant prices are the prices of some base year that you choose. In our case it's the year 2000. So what is the solution? You use the quantities produced in 2008 but multiply them with the constant or base year prices of 2000. There is no inflation in these prices and that can push up the value of GDP. So, we take the quantities produced in 2008. 11,000 units of beer, 5,000 bags of potato, 9,000 units of soft drinks. And to calculate the value of the real GDP, multiply those with the prices that you get from the base year, 2000. These prices are then used to get a GDP value of 85,100. This is used in the calculation of the growth rate 
and the result is that over this period the value of the increase in the quantities produced is only 17 percent this is much more realistic to say that the economy grew by 17 percent over the period than 182 percent there are also other ways to measure economic activity one is to consider the gross national income this basically means looking at GDP but also including the incomes earned by South Africans abroad and the factor payments made to factors of production from outside of South Africa. The gross national income is the GDP minus the factor payments made abroad plus the factor payments received by South Africans. But GDP measures economic activity, GNI measures living standards. Lesotho is a good example of why this distinction is important. The gross domestic product of the economy of Lesotho is quite small, but a lot of people from Lesotho work in the South African economy, and we make factor payments to them. That should be added to the value of GDP in Lesotho to get an idea of their gross national income. In their case, gross national income is much larger than just the GDP. Another possible distinction is to look at the difference between spending on GDP and the gross domestic expenditure. Spending on GDP is the spending on the goods and services produced within the country. This would be consumption spending, investment spending, government spending and spending on exports minus the spending on imports because imports were not produced within the country. Exports are sold outside of the country, but the spending on them should still be added as part of spending on GDP. The alternative is to look at gross domestic expenditure, or GDE. Apologies for the initial error on this slide. Gross domestic expenditure is the spending that occurs within the borders of the country. You'll see in this case, there is no mention of the exports, because spending on exports occur outside the borders of the country. But for each of these, the consumption spending, investment spending, government spending, they'll all have an element of imported goods included within that spending. So GDE consists of C plus I plus G. Did we achieve the outcomes of this section? Can you distinguish between nominal and real GDP and calculate the economic growth rates? You can also have a look at Chapter 4 in Moeren Furi and at the additional resources available on Eerfundi. Answer the quiz questions. And finally, follow at Econoom on Twitter.